This video is brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com YT. Hello, I'm Jesse Skinner from Coding with Jesse, and today I want to talk about use state with React. So I have here a component, a React component that is using the uh, class syntax for creating a component. Uh, so let me walk through that. We have our state here. We have one state variable, the count, zero. So what I have is a button. And when you click it, it shows you how many times you've, count you've clicked it. Uh, so we keep track of that number in this count variable. Then we have our render function down here where we actually return our button. Inside of it, we're rendering uh, how many times it's been clicked using this.state.count. And then we also have uh, a click handler, which uses this.setState. Uh, in this case, we're passing it a function. So we get the old state, and then we can pass in uh, an object that contains our updated count. Uh, so you're probably familiar with this if you've done React programming. Maybe you haven't used the newer uh, React hooks. Um, so in the old days, we had we had to choose between having components that used state, in which case we had to have a, a class or an object for that component, and we used to have to use this dot set state, and then if we had a component that didn't need any state, we could make what was called a stateless functional component. Um, stateless. So this one wouldn't we wouldn't be able to do we wouldn't be able to have a variable that we keep track of. Uh, we, we'd be able to render something that didn't have any state in it. Um, we could render a button, basically. So if we want to, now with React hooks, we have the ability to introduce state in a functional component. Uh, so I'm going to actually rewrite this class traditional component as a functional component. With uh, and use use state instead of set state. So I'm going to have them both here for now. And this is going to complain for a minute. I'll, I'll just give it a different name so it stops complaining. And then, uh, so what we want to do, we're going to render the same thing in, in our functional component. But instead of calling this.state, uh, we're going to have just a variable count. And instead of this dot on click bind, uh, we're going to do things a little different. So first, I need to actually start using use state. Now you can access use state on the React object. So I can I can do something like um, state equals React dot use state, basically. Uh, but it's it's more common to import it separately. So you can do that as well. And then you don't need to call it react dot use state. So the way that this works is we pass in a default value, first of all. And that can be whatever value. In our case, it's the number 0. It's how many times the button's been clicked. So we're going to pass that in. And we get back, uh, actually, we get back an array. So what we'd have if we wanted to, we could write it like this, count equals state 0, the first element of the array is uh, the current value of the state. And then the second value of the state return value is a function that we can use to call to set new state. So in this case, on click, we're going to maybe set count, count plus one. And if I swap this out, so it uses the new one instead, and read fresh, it actually works. Now, it's typical to use destructuring to clean up these three lines of code and just have one line of code. And the way that we can do that um, is by replacing the state variable with a destructured array. So what that looks like is, uh, here, I'll, I'll leave this here, and then I'll write this as another line. So what we can do instead is have count and set count being set equal to use state zero. So you see, I'm going to get rid of these three lines. Uh, and this does the same thing. This is taking the return value from use state and breaking it apart. That's what we mean by destructuring. We're breaking it apart, and we're assigning 
two new variables here to have to relate to the the zeroth and the first so the basically the first two or the only two values of the array so I'm gonna get rid of this and that simplifies things a little bit uh, now to be a little more accurate we shouldn't call set count with and pass it in the old count plus the new count it'd be more accurate to pass it a function that sort of what we were doing up here with set state so I could have called set state I could have referred to this dot state but it's it's a better practice to pass it a function this is the function the function that way in case uh, the state is changing like if there's a lot of click events it's not going to be bound to whatever the value was when they clicked it'll actually trigger an event that is able to increment the count multiple times if that makes sense uh, so we're, we're going to do the same thing here we're going to set count and then we'll get actually count and then we're returning count plus one so that's going to do the same thing that should work just as well we can actually do the same thing here where we pass in the default value and the reason you might want to do this um, actually let's talk through how how use state actually works so there's some magic going on it's a bit of a hack to be honest uh, to allow a function to be called many 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 times and to have some data associated with the uh, the instance of the component remember that you could have more than one button on the page so somehow use state is going to be returning a count that relates to this instance of this component as it changes through time so how, how is that even possible well what happens is uh, with these hooks react is react calls your component to tell it okay time to render and it knows so it it's aware of which component is rendering at any given time and when you call use state inside the component rendering uh, it knows that your component is using this state right so the first time that this renders you know if you have a you add a button to the page first time it renders it's going to pass in this zero and it's going to return the zero because you know if I refresh the page there's no count uh, the second when I click again now when it renders we're passing in the zero and we're getting back a one because we have called set count and increased the count like we've set the count to be one so now the zero is just being ignored on the second on the second render on the third render on the fourth it's ignoring that zero every time it's just gonna return us whatever the current state is and still a handle to update the state uh, so if this you know a zero is not a lot of computation but let's say we had to do a ton of math um, so I'll make a function called a ton of math it's just gonna return zero but just use your imagination that it's actually doing a lot more than that and uh, if I pass that in maybe on the first render we do need to do you know a ton of computation and that's fine but then on the second render we don't want to do that again and again especially because it's not being used it's just being discarded right so you can also pass in a function this way to use state so then what's gonna happen is it's going to call that on the first render but after that it's just going to be a function that it can basically ignore it's not going to call it so that still works just fine um, and so now that you understand a little bit of of the that trick that react is doing to make this work uh, you might understand why they say you can't put this use state inside any kind of condition or loop like you can't put it inside an if statement you can't put it inside a a loop or any anything where it might not run every time in the same order that's really important uh, so if I do something silly like oh I don't know how to I don't know what I'm going to do here, but let's say math.random is less than 0 0.5, so it's, going to, it's like flipping a coin. And let's say, uh, well, I don't even know if how to break my own code here, but we're going to try it anyway. We're going to make a let state, uh, and if otherwise it's going to use, uh, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 
and an empty function, and then uh, so const count equals state zero, and const set count equals state one. So what I'm doing here is uh, I have now my use state inside a randomness. So half the time it'll start with zero, and the other half of the time it'll just render one, two, three and not use state at all. Don't write code like this, this is horrible. But I just want to demonstrate two things here. One is that um, it gives you a warning, in this, in, at least in code sandbox. React hook use state is called conditionally. React hooks must be called in the exact same order in every component render. And I'm not doing that here. Here, you don't know what's going to happen. So when I refresh, it could be 0, and sometimes it's 1, 2, 3. You don't know. So if it's 1, 2, 3 and I start clicking, it's just not going to work because it's calling my fake function. If it's 0, if it's zero and I start clicking, it still doesn't work because when it comes back to render, uh, it's, just not, it's just not able to do it. So it also does some tricks to, I think it calls your render other time. I think it calls it twice from what I know and does that to make sure that it's it's behaving properly. So don't do anything I just did. That's all nonsense. Uh, we'll go back to what it should be. So we have count, set count, and we're going to set that equal to use state, and we're just going to pass it zero. So I hope you've uh, gained a little bit of understanding on how React hooks works, uh, both in your code and under the hood a little bit. And uh, it's very powerful, actually. Uh, you can do so much with it. You can create your own hooks. You can uh, make a hook of your own called use count, and basically just return this. Um, and you can actually, or yeah, I could use it this way. And then you don't have to pass the initial value. It's sort of done inside there. But then I could enhance this. So I could, instead of having set count, I could have increment, in which case I would do this. So count and set count equals use state. This is now in my custom hook. And then here I'm going to call that increment. And I'm going to return count and increment. And I'm going to define increment in here as a function that calls set count, sets count to count plus one. And now this has cleaned up our code. I can move this use count to another file if I wanted to, use it across multiple components, reuse it. Uh, my code's been cleaned up. I don't need to think about adding one to anything anymore. And it works just as fine. So I hope that's uh, given you some tools you can use in your own code. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. Cheers.